Friends, uh, thank you very much for joining us. It's good to see you all. Well, I'm good to have you join us. I'm sorry, I haven't made that error for a long time, have I? James, it is good to see you. Yeah, and, and it is good to see you, Ian, yeah, on thank this... You. Um, well, it, it, we're, we're recording for Trinity 8, aren't we? Uh, we are, yes. Um, you, but you're getting ahead of yourself, James, because I was just going to mention the fact that we, we missed a trick uh, in that this is our 109th video together. And that is a significant mathematical number because? Well, it just means that nine weeks ago we forgot to say to people, <laughs> hey, that's our 109th video. <laughs> yeah, uh, OK. Well, 109 is... There we go, though, so... We've been going quite a long time. Yes. I'm trying to work out whether on the... Uh, this, is a, oh, this is a bad mistake, trying to work out whether 109 is a prime number or not. We'll know afterwards and someone will make a comment about it. Yeah, so. yeah. Oh, or while we're conversing, you can do the sums if you want. Do the math. So. Thank you. But there we go. So uh, anyway, so we should have nine weeks ago said, hooray, it's our 100th episode. But yeah. we, we missed a trick. There we go. Okay. We, we'll make sure we mark the 150th. Yeah. Uh, but James, sorry, you were taking us back to the matter in hand. So yeah, and I like, like to be you know down to business straight away. So it's Trinity Eight. You and do, we're, I know. We're, we're carrying on with Mark, and it's Mark six, thirty to thirty four, and then fifty three yes. to fifty six. We miss out a vast chunk in chunk. the middle of this chapter, uh, which yeah. is Jesus feeding the five thousand and um, uh, Jesus in the boat. Uh, yeah, if I remember rightly, and. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, one, it's one right. of these weird lectionary things where really, I suppose really we're getting the, it's another Mark and the sandwich. We get the bread, but not the jam. Um, in fact, we yes. get, well, we, the we, also get a piece of bread, we also get a piece of bread from the leftover sandwich from last week, yes. uh, which is very <laughs> interesting. So <laughs> you, can, you can follow this. We've got two sandwiches and one sandwich <laughs> is a little bit sort of stale from last week as it were um <laughs> and and then we've got sort of fresh bread for you this week but no jam uh, and in fact i think the okay. jam comes uh, actually we get the jam from john's gospel so another <laughs> another another source <laughs> provides the jam in a week or two so it's all a bit strange what the lectionary uh, guys were doing when they put this together i have no idea no, and in fact, next week when we do get the jam from John, we're actually going to get more jam from John for the following three weeks, like four right, weeks. Right, okay, so, so we're, going to, we're going to be overdosing on jam, having overdosed on bread. So, okay, all right. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, James, I sense your jollity is obviously a sort of hysterical reaction to the uh, football result, but uh, there we That's go. That's right, it could, could well be. It could, well, it could be a hysterical reaction to all sorts of things that have gone on in the last week. But anyway, <laughs> the less said about that, the better. <laughs> But look, if the lecturer is going to miss out on this middle bit of the sandwich, the one thing we don't want our viewers to do is to miss out on those four lovely things we love them to do. No, no. We, we, well, we love them to like the videos, to click like. Uh, that'd be great. We also love them to subscribe to the, the Safidzo YouTube channel. That would be yeah, there's a button underneath there. You can click subscribe. There. And there's yeah. one at the end as well. And you'll get a notification of, of new videos. Yeah. We'd love you to um, share on the social media. Um, do just click yeah. the link button. Um, and we'd love you to comment as well. So lots of comments. Yes, we've week. had. Yeah. yeah, we have. Yeah. Yeah, that's very exciting. Some, quite a number of which were very, very interesting and really helpful. So thank you for bringing your wisdom uh, and sharing it with us. Mm. 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 Indeed. Well, should we get our teeth into the bread? I mean, yeah. it's ironic, isn't it? You're talking about getting teeth into bread because, of course, actually bread becomes quite a significant <laughs> theme. It does, in this yes. Little bit of it. Yes, although and in the, 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 and in the bread is actually in the jam, and we're missing out. We're missing out because <laughs> it's the feeding of the five thousand. So if you just like to complicate it even more, we could, you know. But let's try and stick to the the, the, the stuff that the lectionary um, compilers have actually given us. Um, yeah, yeah. So I mean, metaphor, if we, metaphor, metaphors in metaphors, we got there. Yeah, metaphors, in, yeah. I mean, if we were to dive in straight away, we should just sort of dispatch with last week's bread first, which is just, I think, yes, that's thirty, isn't it? Um, yes. Where we've got uh, the result, as it were, of the sending out of the apostles, which comes in uh, Mark six and, and seven onwards before the story yeah. of John the Baptist. And so now we've got the report, as it were, the, the coming back, the gathering around Jesus, telling him all that they've done uh, and taught. So that's, uh, that, that's how, that, that's that last bit of bread. And it's, mm. it, it's really interesting, I think, isn't it? Even just that little verse is really interesting that there's this sense of accountability of the apostles to yes. 
Jesus, that actually anybody who is sent out by Jesus is accountable to him and, and they report back what, is, what has been done. I, I think that's fascinating. And, and of course, being with Jesus, um, mm. i.e. being sent out by him and then coming back to him, being with him is part of discipleship, is part of apostleship, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah it is. Uh, now, a couple of other interesting things to note. This report is extremely brief. This is an interesting, unusual example of where Mark does something very brief, where Luke actually expands it because yes, Luke talks about all the things that have happened and there's a sort of dialogue mm. in his version of it. Mm. But the other thing that's interesting is that this is the only place in the narrative part of Mark where the 12 are described as apostles. Yeah, yeah. So they, the word apostle is mentioned when Jesus calls them in chapter three. Yeah. But this is the only time in the narrative that describes as, as apostles. Mm. So, again, I think that connects with your comment about being sent out by Jesus and coming back. It's mm. when it's as they're sharing in the ministry of Jesus. And again, he uses this really interesting phrase, all they had done and taught. Yeah. So the ministry is about, well, in the detailed instructions when Jesus sends them out, he says, proclaim the kingdom. And then he says, do these things, you know, heal the sick, drive out demons, raise the dead, yeah. and all that kind of stuff, lay hands on people. So, so it is interesting to see that parable of, par, parable of done, done and taught. But, of course, the other interesting thing, just to note, we, we did touch on this last week, was the fact that there's a gap here filled by the narrative of the beheading of John the Baptist where we don't know what Jesus is doing. Yes, yeah, because, um, in fact, Mark, Mark doesn't imply, I think, in, in the way he tells the story, that the beheading of John the Baptist happens in in between the sending out and the return i mean he, no. he doesn't give a time time indicator of it um no. he's, he's just he's basically says he's telling a story um what 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 while that while the sort of narrative time is passing for us isn't it really yeah but we yeah. i mean yeah, he's, I think, he's, he's filling his twiddling his narrative thumbs as it were yeah yeah but this of course is not the only place we we can work out when these things happened is it it isn't are you going to stray into john's gospel well, I wondered if you might stray into John's gospel. Yeah, okay. Well, it, yeah. it is interesting that uh, in John chapter 3, John three twenty four. 24, uh, so we've had all the events around um, the uh, wedding at Cana, uh, well, and Jesus cleansing the temple. Yeah. And in John three twenty four, it just says that John had not yet been put in prison. Yeah. But, of course, in Mark, you know, he tells us that after John had been put in prison, that's when Jesus begins preaching in public. Yeah. So the implication is that the things that we've seen in the first part of the, the fourth gospel are things that are not part of Jesus' public ministry yet. Yeah. Uh, and, and then, so again, that, 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 that movement between the fourth gospel, then back to Mark, and then we have the episodes in Mark. And then John 4, the end of John 4, is the rejection of Jesus at Nazareth, which we read about in Mark 6. So then we get this section in John 5, where Jesus uh, heals a man at the pool of Bethesda. Uh, and it's at, at the time of the feast. We're not told what it is. It's not one of the Pilgrim festivals. And then following that in John 6, we get the feeding of the 5,000, which we then get in this bit following up our beginning of our passage today. So mm -hmm. the obvious conclusion from that is that while the disciples are out, having been sent out on mission, and when Mark fills in the narrative with the beheading of John the Baptist, that's where the fourth gospel tells us Jesus went down to Jerusalem and yeah. healed yeah. him. Well, he must be doing something. Yeah, 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 absolutely, which is, is extraordinary. There's very interesting dovetailing between Mark and John. Of course, yeah. you can read more details in Richard Borkham's essay on uh, John for readers of Mark. Yes, yes. I mean, Borkham's theory is that, that John is written for assuming that people have read Mark, essentially. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. I think we've mentioned that several times. <laughs> No, we we then get so that's sorry that's just first thirty. We then get into um, the introduction. So our reading is just uh, 30, 30 to thirty four, isn't it? It is. That's um, right. Yeah. And then the now it's technically the narrative of the feeding of five thousand begins in verse thirty five when he grew late and his disciples came to yeah. him and all that kind of stuff. This is another little place. But this little this little section then from thirty one to thirty four is is very interesting for several reasons, isn't it? Because first of all, he says come away by yourselves to a desert place, to a desolate place, to a quiet place, and rest yeah. a while. And I think that there's a real danger, that's a bit of a danger, particularly if you read the authorised version where it says desert place, that we kind of think there's lots of sand dunes and stuff. But of course it isn't that at all. It just means that it's away from the crowds and where the people are. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And, and um, yeah, and, and, well, the word is er Eremos, isn't it? Um mm. A place for desert, um, a deserted place, which is resonant, of course, in in the Gospels, the wilderness, um, 
it, it also has those connotations. But this idea yeah. that when people, I mean, I think I find this incred incredibly reassuring, actually, that when, when one has been doing intensive ministry and one is exhausted, Jesus acknowledges mm. that and you, you, that, that mm. there's a need for rest and recuperation. And, yeah. and that's yeah. fascinating, isn't it? Um, yeah, it is. Yeah, but of course it also, you know, as you say, has a double sense in the Old Testament where yeah. the desert is both the place of testing, but actually very often it's the place where, you know, it, it's looked back on, for instance, from Hosea as the place where God woos his people. It's yeah. a time where you can yeah. relax. Now, I think this is really interesting. The second half of verse 31, for many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. Yeah. Um, and that, that's that's fascinating because... You know, I, when, when we say we're too busy to eat, it means we're too busy to run past or pop into McDonald's or too busy to run past and grab some bread. But of course, in the culture there, to eat wasn't just to put food in your mouth. To eat was to relax, to sit, to spend time with someone, to have yeah. conversation. It was a much less pressured time. So yeah. as you say, this is really interesting. Jesus recognizes that they need this recuperation. They need this renewal. They need this time where they can have fellowship and, and conversation one, one with another i also love the, the the sort of narrative touch where uh, quite often it happens in mark instead of doing things in a linear order and saying it was too busy they had no time to eat therefore jesus said he tells us what jesus said and then he subsequently explains the reason why jesus said it i mean this happens classically in chapter five with the helium the garrison demoniac yes. where all the events are jumbled around and he says what jesus says and then he explains why that happened and what's going on so it's a very yeah. interesting part of mark's narrative technique yeah yeah absolutely and um, I mean, the, 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 of course, the, the, the gathering round to eat is is a time of fellowship. It's also a time of reconnecting, isn't it? In in a sense, I mean, that's what it. You know, we, yeah. in, in a family, you you a, a meal time in a family is where you've all been doing your own thing or whatever or whatever yeah. the task assigned is, and then you come back together again, and that reestablishes yeah. the bonds of kinship and so on. So yeah. that yeah. that is that is interesting. If they don't have time for that. That that's yeah. the problem, which is, I suspect, why Mark mentions it, because yeah. the people of God yeah. need to keep gathering round the table to be reconnected. Yes. Um, yeah. Yes. And and this phrase that Mark distinctively uses, there's several times in the gospel where he says, come away by yourselves, and it's uh, yeah. katidian. Yeah. Uh, and again, that happens at key key moments where Jesus needs to gather around and needs to teach them and needs to renew them and reorient them and, and refresh them. Yeah. Um, the, at the practical level, um, that connects for me with the uh, well, two things practically. One is the Jewish habit of the Friday Shabbat meal, oh, where yes. you know it's very, that, that 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 whatever people are doing uh, on a Friday, the tradition is that you at the beginning of the Shabbat because of course the Shabbat the the day off the Saturday actually starts on Friday evening from five yes. o'clock from sundown. Yes. So the first thing, the first thing you do is rest. <laughs> yeah. Little, little bit like the, some imitation of the creation story, where you know God creates humanity on the sixth day, and what do they do? The first thing they do, the first thing they do is rest because yeah, it's the, rest. the seventh, seventh day is set yeah. aside. So, and um, we need to work out of that rest that God, is, God gives us, yes. rather than resting from the work. We have to be renewed before we can actually do what God calls us to. Yeah. But the other thing, interesting thing is practical one in our household. So we have a sort of multi generational household here because we, I've talked about this before. We mm. look after Maggie's mother, who's ninety one, and we have various lodgers and folk coming for a year or two and we people are free to do whatever they like but the one thing we say to them is that in the evenings we always eat together yeah that's brilliant. so yeah. if you're in yeah. the house that's the deal join us for a meal that that's the that's the deal that's the expectation yeah. and that's the way that you actually do build relationships with one yeah. another because you know that six o'clock we you know if people are around mm -hmm. uh we'll be gathering and, and catching up yeah. and finding out what's been yeah. happening during the day yeah yeah there's a slightly sort of quirk, geographical quirk here, though, isn't there? Um, they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves, and it's not really clear which direction they're going. And we have mentioned before that mm. in the, in this gospel, in Mark's gospel, they go across them. When they're going across the lake, of course, they're just going across the, the top part from That's the northwest to the northeast or, or back again. Uh, and in fact, um, Dick France says in his commentary, Mark's geography here cannot easily be harmonised with Luke's parallel description. Although... My recollection is at the end of the um, feeding of the five thousand, the bit we jump onto, the Mark lines his geography up correctly again. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, and it's interesting, isn't it, that, that very often when they in Mark's gospel, where these people do come away by themselves, that yes. is actually unsuccessful. Yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Maybe many of our viewers are familiar with this when they desperately try to yeah. 
find space yeah. and then that space is kind of invaded and it's interesting because they um they hurry the, 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 the those who are following them um you know they recognize them they hurry there on foot from all the towns so it's like they're kind of walking along the shore with the boat yes. you know perhaps a short distance because down. the boat just going across hugged. north of lake that would be it would be invisible from the shore yeah, yeah. they would have hugged, no, hugged, no. hugged it i suspect and and yeah. but they arrive ahead of them so you know that is a seriously yeah. determined crowd, isn't it? That um, it is. You know, gets there, wait, and, and is waiting for them. Um, yeah, what? That's that's the kind of draw that Jesus and the apostles have. Had, yeah, and yeah. and, and it's, it's uh, little reminder there of this. Yeah, the children's book about Mrs. Elephant. I don't know if you know that one. Don't think I do. Where she's she's oh, where she's <laughs> the whole story of the book is that she's trying to get a bit of peace. Oh, uh, oh maybe I do remember it actually. Then, yes, yes. And then and then the children come and disturb her. Oh, peace at last. She ends sort of hiding away in different places and then finally, you know, she gets peace at last. Yeah. Um but I, actually I can't remember the end of it. It's a long time since I read it. <laughs> um just just a little um bit of sort of uh, historical realism note here, just to note that Josephus estimates there are around 200 villages in Galilee at this time. There's quite a lot of prosperous stuff. It was a, a trading mm. route. There was the fishing business and so on. Uh, Tiberius was, was, it was a pretty well-established um, town, city, I suppose we'd call it. Um, and so the population of the region, well, I mean, this is very approximate, somewhere, this is very vague, somewhere between 200,000 and 700,000. I mean, that's a, that's a big span. But a great crowd of 5,000 is perfectly plausible. In fact, in terms of the population of the region, it's not yeah. that much. But it's a, it's a yeah. natural crowd. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, anyway, this is this is this is realistic. And just a couple of things to notice then. So the crowd's gone along the shore. It's great crowd. Again, we did mention that this old theme of great crowds was a a, a, a mark yeah. of this gospel in this section of it. Yeah. Um, and then Jesus' response is fascinating, isn't it? Because yeah. it uses the term splagnisnomai, which yes. I didn't say properly there very well. But but it literally means, it it's, it's, it's uses the word from which we get our word spleen. Yeah. So, in you know, in, in sort of ancient anatomy, as it were, your head is, is for cooling. And that was what was popularly thought amongst Greece. Your, your heart is not the seat of your emotions. The heart is the seat of your will and your decision, your understanding. Hence, Paul says in Ephesians 1, may the eyes of your heart be opened that you may comprehend. And the seat of your emotions was your stomach. So yeah. this is fascinating. But it's Jesus. Jesus is gut wrenched when he sees the crowd. Yeah. Uh, and really fascinating. This word, this verse, like is only in the Gospels, only ever used of Jesus. Isn't that fascinating? Yes. Yeah, it's extraordinary. Yeah. And so it's interesting, isn't it, that it's this this um, emotional response, as it were, is... Um, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, they were they were leaderless. It's a very yes. um, it, now that I think that's that's fascinating. We would often we would often associate compassion, as this word is often translated here, with yeah. seeing an individual struggling with something, you know, difficulty in life, a, a, a grief, a, an injury, a life threatening yeah. illness, yeah. something like that. But here, it's simply that the people are leaderless. That and I, I think that's it a is. really interesting thing, yeah. and that actually the response, the, the the response of compassion in Jesus is is not what we would call pastoral. It's um, <laughs> it, it's teaching. It, yeah. it, it, he teaches them. Um, yeah. He explains yeah. the the world to them. The the, the world, yeah. you know, yeah. the, he, he gives them the right understanding of how God is at work in the world and in them. Yeah. Um, that yeah. must be what it includes, doesn't it? And and I think that's really interesting. And of course, this idea is rooted again in the Old Testament. So interesting in, in the book of Numbers, um, the prospect of Moses' death means they're going to be sheep without, like sheep without a shepherd. Uh, it's used in 1 Kings 22 of Ahab's army after his death in battle, they're sheep without yeah. a shepherd. Yeah. And of course, these things form. A, oh, and in Ezekiel, of course, you know the the, the leaders are the who failed. Are like bad shepherds who mislead the mm. the people, and God is going to be there. Well, the promise is, God Himself Elf will lead them. Will yeah. be the, the shepherd, will be the leader, and of course, the, you got the imagery in Psalm twenty three of the Lord is my shepherd as well. Yeah. Well, that's fascinating, actually. King David, the one who should be shepherd to the people, actually says, "God is my shepherd." Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's he's an, he's an under shepherd under what doing, and then Jesus comes along, and of course, he is the good shepherd, and John makes that explicit. Yeah. Um, 
the other uh, the other thing just pick up on this thing about teaching as well so leaders as people yeah. need teaching and they, they need understanding without this they go hungry at names there's i'm just doing a quick screen share there's a really good quotation from um ernest best which um uh dick france quotes so um let me just get the screen here here we are so this is a great little quotation that sort of sums this up mark sets out jesus as the shepherd who feeds his people with true teaching from his supply there is more than enough to feed all their needs and the reason why that's significant i mean we're, gonna, we're missing this out because this is the jam in the sandwich yeah, isn't it? but exactly. it's actually the jam yeah. with bread but it is fascinating in narrative terms, Mark sets this up for Jesus to be the shepherd who feeds his people with teaching. And I think surely, we'll come on to this next week, but surely this gives us a major key for interpreting the feeding of the 5,000. Absolutely, it? yeah. Yeah, I must do. But perhaps we should leave people in suspense and uh, yeah, maybe. pick that up in yeah. Yeah. next time. We don't uh, I'm just, I mean, here's, well, no, but here's an interesting thing to reflect on between now and next week, which is... Think of the number of ways we use metaphors of eating or consuming to describe things in everyday life. Yeah. Just, I'll just throw that out there. Yeah, very good. Very good, Ian. Yeah. yeah. Good yeah. preparation for next week. Okay, so that's the first... Have we finished the first half so there? that's the first bit. So uh, we'll have to tackle the other, other piece of bread now. Yeah. We Our should at the end family. of the episode, which is right down to verse... 53. 53. So this is after the feeding of 5,000, mm. after the storm on the lake, after Jesus called the storm. Gosh, an awful lot has happened, hasn't it, in between these yeah. two slices yeah. of bread. And then we get to the other side. When they'd crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret. Okay, now we've got our geography back again. Yes. Uh, and and they, they moor to the shore. Yes, um, of course. Now, yes, go on. Go on. I mean, Gennesaret, is, perhaps it's worth just saying where Gennesaret is. Um, it's on the north on west, the northeastern. northwest coast of galilee between oh yes it is. Be between capernaum and tiberius yes it is, and right. it's, a, it's a bit of a sort of small fertile plain area about th three miles by one mile i think um yep that, that sort of that's what now, this is the place where isn't this the place where the jesus boat was found ah uh not not Ginosar it is now called yeah i think it might be actually it might be it yep. was a and it was a very densely populated area, so as you would expect, yeah. Um, in, with, with, yeah. So I think it might have been actually. We, sh we showed that a couple of weeks ago, didn't we? Yep, 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 yep. Um, yeah, and so once again, um, the people that word "recognize" comes. It, it, yes. keep, it keeps being recognized. That's a really interesting word that yeah. is both in there in both the yeah. first bit of bread and the second bit of bread. Um, yeah. I'm sure that's Which, a significant word for, for Mark at this point, yeah. um, the recognition of Jesus. And they're rushing to see him. Once again, they're, they're, they're running, rushing. They are. To get there. They are. Now, what is also interesting here is that, you know, this section here of Mark's Gospel, this, this parallels in, in John, in the fourth Gospel, the bit where he then goes into the discourse about the bread of life and you have to eat my flesh and all that kind of stuff. But what is really fascinating here is this is a classic example of where we get in, in, in this sort of slightly expanded, there's more detail that we need. We get lots of kind of what you might say are eyewitness detail. And I think the running about is, is, is one of those. Mm. Um, the running about the whole region. Uh, they begin to bring the sick people. And, you know, we're told exactly how they bring the sick people. They bring them on their crabatoy. Yes, they're, they're on mad. Their, on, on their beds. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, which is a which is a, a what what a, a poor person, a sick person would have had. Yeah, so it's a simple sort of wooden stretcher or yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and they take them round to wherever they heard he was. So again, you get this whole thing about the gossip and the word being passed on, and yeah. you know the, 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 the rumors about Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, chasing him down, really. Yeah, yeah. Right. Interesting. And again, it's interesting. He says, wherever he came, in villages or in cities or in countryside. Now, again, we need to just think city doesn't mean like London or Tokyo mm -hmm. or New York. City just means a larger urban settlement uh, or, or even in the countryside. And again, this is some really fascinating connections here with the account we get of the apostles practice in um, Acts yeah. as well. So a yeah, yeah. uh, little bit of eyewitness detail. They lay the sick in the marketplaces. Why do they lay them in the marketplace as well? Because that's the place where everyone gathers. That's where the loads are looking for work, are hanging around. This is a sort of meeting place. But this is where you'd have your, well, in, nowadays we have our coffee in the market square, or our cafe, whatever it is. Um, this is the natural place where people gather. 
And and this is a fascinating detail, isn't it? They might yep. even touch the fringe of his garment. Yeah. And we get the same kind of things. There's a bit of an allusion back there, isn't it, to Mark V about the uh, the woman just touching the edge of his garment. There is. Though there's an interesting I, – I, I don't know what you think of this, but it, there's an interesting distinction between the two. Because in Mark V, oh. the woman reaches out to touch the hem of his garment, hoping not to be mm. seen. Here, it marks very explicit. Yeah. He says they, they beg him – that they might touch oh, even yeah. the fringe of his cloak. Yeah, that's so interesting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Now, when you think about, yeah, when, I mean, when you think about that in terms of mission, that's really interesting, isn't it? What do you think the implication is? Well, um, I, I think I think there are, there, there's a there's a real sense in which these people are reaching out to to understand who Jesus is. Hmm. Mm. Um, we tend to think that people aren't interested and we need to make them interested. <laughs> um, yes. Which is interesting, isn't it? Well, that's fascinating because I was speaking to Michael Beasley, who is the Bishop of Bath and Wells last week when we were at General Synod. Yeah. And he just has a session with, in their diocese, with a woman whose name escapes me and I'm kicking myself, but she is one of the people involved in the Church of Eden in Mission. And her comment to him was if you're speaking to a crowd of the general public, you can usually reckon that about 40% are actually really interested in what you wow. uh, are going to say. And the reason why that was significant for him is the next day he went to Glastonbury <laughs> <laughs> and he's, he spoke to the crowd, which was 120,000. And it's wow. brilliant. It's on YouTube somewhere, I think. And he just said, hey, you know, here I am, blah, blah, blah. And he mentioned Jesus and said, look, if you never found out any more about Jesus, if you don't know about him, you haven't read his story, then come and talk to us. We've got a tent here, you know, from, from the diocese. Yeah. And he said it was really encouraging because this idea that 40% of the crowd might be interested meant that when you look in a crowd of 120,000, maybe there were, they were 45,000, 50,000 50, people. Yeah. Yeah, who might be interested? I yeah. mean, that is really fascinating, isn't it? <laughs> it's so, astonishing. It's really Absolutely astonishing. Encouraging, but it, but it sort of you know backs up your observation here. Yeah, yeah. And they're touching and as many, the, uh, yeah. I mean, they're touching the um, fringe of his cloak. Yes, the tassels, yeah. the, the tassels, which yeah. which of course are part of what a, Jew, what a Jewish man would wear as a symbol of the commandments of obedience to yes, God. Yes, he would. Mind. Aren't they? So, and that's in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 22, verse 12, mentions yeah. that as a command to do that, yeah. to wear that. Which gives us a very You shall make yourself tassels. Yes. But it's an interesting Sorry, you shall make yourself Jesus. tassels on the four corners of the garment, which would you cover yourself. Sorry, James, yeah. I'm talking over you now. That's all right. Sorry about that. Um, well, it, I mean, it's interesting that because interesting? it implies that something that we, have, we say constantly on here, that Jesus, yeah. we need to understand Jesus as a Torah observant Jew. Yes. Yes, and, absolutely. And that, the fact that he wears the garment, yeah, he's obedient to the commandments of God, the yeah. Levitical Holiness Code, whatever, yeah, all of that, um, and people can reach out and touch the tassels, which are representative yeah. of that for him, yeah, and find yeah. so him. So as they touch him, as yeah. they touch him, they find healing. The power goes out of him. They find that as a reminder. Well, here's an interesting thing. It's a reminder that here is the new word of God. Yeah. So there was the word of God through Moses, and now God himself has come. Yeah. And this is the word. And this is the word which teaches and feeds and heals them as well. So it yeah. does tie in again with the yeah. idea of Jesus as, as bread. And, of course, that connects with the whole uh, comment Jesus makes when quoting Deuteronomy in his temptations, when it says, you know, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth, yeah. the mouth of God. So we've been given some crumbs here. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine verses two little bits, some crumbs of bread of a sandwich, and actually it feels as though we've, we've have actually had a bit of a feast. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's, there's a surprising amount in there, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, there, yeah. There, there really is, yeah. Um, so, uh, folks, thank you very much for joining us. Don't remember, forget to do those four things. Uh, click like, uh, share on the social media, uh, subscribe and also add some comments and continue this fascinating discussion. Yeah. James, lovely to see you. Thank you for joining me. Folks, see you next time.